A lot of people are saying that it's resources that is causing this increase in murder rates. However, New York City and London have very similar numbers of officers and a very similar budget. So what we should be looking at is why New York, with the same resources, is doing significantly better in their decreased rate of homicides than London is. Numbers can feel really scary. I bet that if I asked this room how many of you were afraid or didn't like or were bad at maths and stats in school, I'd get at least 50% of hands up, probably, probably more. We have this idea of risk. You know, we hear these stories in the news or we read newspaper articles and all of a sudden we all think we're going to die by a shark attack. Right, because that's what we hear. So we all of a sudden get this idea that some situations are much riskier than they actually are. So asymmetry can tell us a lot about people, right? So there's a, you walk down the street and certain people look, you know, everyone looks sort of normal for lack of a better word. And then every once in a while you see someone that looks a little bit different. So asymmetry is a measuring stick, if you will. We're all familiar with the health headlines that tell us we can eat butter one day, but not the next or that glass of wine that was good for us is now bad for us. So which is it? It was a very different thing to say versus the other polls, but given my prediction models, um, we thought that Trump was gonna win by about 79%. Well, he'll say things like, I created a million jobs this month or whatever. The problem is, is we don't ask each person, are you employed or unemployed in America? We ask a small amount of people. It's a guess, it's a good guess, but it's a guess. So there's a plus or minus on either side. And at the moment, the increase in jobs that we think exists is actually less than the plus or minus error on either side, meaning we have no idea how many jobs have actually been increased by Trump. The reason we do this is really to help children with facial deformities and adults who have gone through, had some sort of facial injury, mm -hmm. uh, whether in war or just in accidents around the home. And the idea is, is that if you take this image of someone post-surgery and compare them to the general population, yeah. you can have an idea of whether you need to change the surgery to make it better, yeah. Yeah. to make the person look more like yeah. the normal population. You know, when, when I go to the vet, I say, well, I don't know, Henry doesn't seem like himself, okay. right? That doesn't help your vet. No. Mm -hmm. So it's a way for either you to answer questions and for the vet to say, or for the, the system to say, your dog's fine, you don't need to go to the vet, or a way to sort of quantify all the problems that are happening through different sort of keywords. And it can also say, well, this treatment isn't really working, so let's try something else. Your chance of winning the national lottery is one in 45 million, pretty low. Buy an extra ticket and you double your chance of winning, which sounds pretty good. But even then, your odds are only two in 45 million, which is still tiny. And that is relative risk. It's too early to tell whether Trump is actually making the difference or not. There's been a trend, but we don't attribute trends to other presidents. It's their time in office. So certainly under Trump, our economy is doing very well, but it's too early to tell whether it's actually Trump's policies or not that are causing that job growth and that economic growth. Luckily, I'm a nerd, a data cruncher, a statistician. Really what this all means is that if something doesn't feel right, a number, a statistic, a study, it might not be. And now you have the tools to ask the right questions. So when someone says it's the truth, the data proves it, the numbers show it, it may not be. most important election in years, and the results of it will be felt around the world. I'm here to help you understand how it's all going down in this, Liberty's Guide to the U.S. Election 2016. In the U.K., the leader of the winning party becomes the Prime Minister. But in the U.S., when Americans go to vote on Election Day, they're voting for a person. Both candidates fought very hard to get their party's nomination. Donald Trump beat out a field of 15 other candidates, including the brother of former President George W. Bush. On the Democratic side, Hillary beat out a much more liberal candidate, Bernie Sanders, for the win. On one hand, we have the new flavor. It's untried, it's untested, it's kind of in your face, but who knows? Or you could go with the plain old vanilla donut. It's tried and tested, but probably the safe option. 
Who's the country going to pick? We'll find out at 9 a.m. on Wednesday. But you know what? Forget the metaphor, because both of these look really delicious. <laughs> All of these conflicting stories are driven by numbers, and that's where the answers lie. You know, I think everyone is shocked. I think no one really knows what you, I mean, these are two candidates with the highest unfavorability rating in history. I mean, more, way more people hate them than love them. So I think everyone's just sort of in awe.